Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna take a look at the best female protagonists in JRPGs, of course in my opinion, but there's a catch. I'm only including female protagonists that are, well, the entire game and story revolves around them. They are not uh, co-protagonists like many other heroines we've seen in video games, in which the protagonist, the main character, is usually the dude, and then there's them like as their co-stars or co-protagonists. And um, I'm also not going to include uh, protagonists from those games that, are, that have like 5 or 10 different protagonists. Like Final Fantasy VI, for example, in which I really don't see a main heroine or, or a main protagonist. Other examples are Odin Sphere and Eternal Poison, in which um, there's more than one protagonist and you really don't feel as if the main heroines, like, I don't know, Sage or Gwendolyn, are the main protagonists. I think the protagonists, the real protagonists in games like this, are the games themselves or the story themselves. That's just my opinion. And I do feel sad because I love Gwendolyn in Odin's Fear and I love, I love Sage in Eternal Poison, but I just can't include them because they don't really feel like the true main characters of the game. But the 10 that you are about to see right now, they do feel, and they are indeed, the main protagonists of each game. So with that in mind, let's begin! Number 10. Virginia Maxwell Even though most Wild Arms games were known for having different protagonists that you could play as, they always had one guy as the center of the plot. In Wild Arms 3, Virginia Maxwell was marketed as the lead character of the game, and when I finally played it, I realized it was true. Sure, you get to play with the other guys in it, each with their own important parts of the plot, but the whole main story revolves around Virginia and her never-ending quest of finding her father through the large wasteland. Over the course of the game, we get to see an immature young girl that wants to be a drifter, or rather an adventurer, just like her father was. But as the story moves forward, so does she, and little by little she starts realizing that life is not that easy, that it comes with hardships and hurtful truths, that she needs to accept in order to continue on. I know there's like a million characters that resemble this description, but I, but I felt Virginia's story to be much more solid than the others. She's a great character from a great underrated game. Number 9. Alicia Alicia from Valkyrie Profile 2 is the main character even though the game's subtitle is Silmeria, one of the three Valkyrie sisters. She resides as a spirit inside Alicia's body, and most of their quest is to try to release her so she can get back to her own. But the one character we play as, the one we endure all those hardships and tragic incidents with, is none other than Alicia, the daughter of King Barbarossa from Dipan. She's your average, clumsy, weak, scaredy cat of a girl, a classic stereotype from your everyday anime, or in this case, your everyday JRPG. However, she's so lovely that you always find yourself supporting her, cheering for her to get out of her unfortunate fate. As the game progresses, Alicia finds herself in all sorts of horrible and undesirable situations that she has to pull through no matter what becoming a much better character than what we all expected. Therefore, killing the stereotype. Needless to say, this is my favorite PS2 JRPG of all time, and I have to admit that it's partly because of Alicia. Number 8. Shion Uzuki. 
the Sino Saga series is one of the best JRPG trilogies of all time. Truly a PlayStation 2 classic that most of us played and loved. We got a very memorable cast of characters, each with their own existential crisis throughout the three games. Shion Uzuki and Cosmos are the main characters here, a humble scientific and her emotionless android whom she wants to protect no matter what since she is so automatically reckless. Over the course of the trilogy, we see them get into all sorts of dangerous and dramatic situations, arguing most of the time between robotic logic and human common sense, that we often get into Xion's shoes trying to help her deal with Cosmos. We see her pain, we see her past, something that gives us a lot of plot-twisting background in order to understand her better. In the end, we stay with a much more mature Xion and her development as a character feels so complete that we couldn't ask for better. Number 7. Mila Maxwell No, she's not Virginia's sister, don't worry, it's just a coincidence. Well, this is one of those cases in which the main character is the fan service itself, but Mila showed me that she was much more than that. From the moment the game started, my prejudice was shattered and I got so interested in her that I couldn't stop playing for a while. It's not often you see a heroine that drags all the attention to her own story plot while the game has yet another protagonist. About 80% of the plot revolves around Mila and her quest on stopping certain dangerous devices in the world, also trying to recover the spirits she has lost. I wish I could tell you more about her, but her background her existential crisis and psychological issues are a huge spoiler, so I'll let you find out for yourself if you haven't yet played this excellent action RPG, with a great sequel as well, in which we get to see even more of the marvelous Mila Maxwell. Number 6. Estelle Bright Estelle is the main heroine of the Trails in the Sky trilogy from the Legend of Heroes franchise. On these three games, we get to see a facet of her life, on how she grows from a clumsy, lovely teenage girl to a badass fencer woman. Sure, there's a lot of romance involved, but all this happening during a huge political plot, one of the most well-written I've ever seen in a video game. What I love about her character it's how she really starts off as just a clueless kid, feeling very different on each game, even though her personality stays the same. It's hard to see games that have this kind of maturity through life within a character, this time being a woman. So I highly recommend playing this trilogy to accompany Estelle in a journey that goes from a childish romantic comedy to a sinister political plot that often gets in the way of human relationships. Number 5. 2B Being a fan of Nier, I couldn't just wait to play the alleged sequel, even though being a spiritual one loosely connected to the original. Now, getting back to existential crises in androids and humans, something that we often see in science fiction, I'd like to say that this is yet another perfect example of that, of how human common sense goes often into conflict with the cold-hearted logic most androids are portrayed with. We usually see the badass cold guy entangled with the humble, friendly and innocent girl. In this game, however, the roles are reversed. Even if at first it does seem that way at the beginning, as the game progresses we get to see something much more deeper than that, going really far to touch several other topics that revolve around post-apocalyptic fevers and the psychological issues they create. Seeing how 2B exists within this atrocious situation and her whole development as a character in that awful world makes playing this game a very satisfactory experience. Number 4. Lacrima Christi It's surprising to see such an unknown character from a hidden gem of an RPG, but sometimes, if we dig deeper into a console's game library, we find excellent stories 
after being better than what the mainstream pro provides. Cardia, the world of fate, might not be that case in terms of gameplay, but in terms of story and characters, oh boy, it sure fits the description. Lacrima is one of the two main protagonists of the game, but as usual, most of the plot revolves around her own part of the story. There's just a lot going on in this game, and with Lacrima being the temporary head of a vigilante group, she starts not only questioning the others, but also herself into the subjective world of right and wrong, dragging us into her own existential crisis. It is there that we put ourselves in her shoes and start getting a clear picture of everything going on with this excellent story. I honestly don't think I would have loved this game if only the other dude had been the protagonist. Lacrima is literally the main reason I fell in love with it. Number 3. Jean Dark Nothing is more gratifying than to see a character find his or her own resolve. It may literally be the exact point of every single protagonist we've seen so far, but in games like this, it feels more present and persistent. We all know the story of John Dark, also known as John of Arc, so this game is also one of those works of art that exist to retell it once again. However, what makes this version so great, or rather what makes the version of John in this game so great, is that it focuses precisely on a human being trying to fight for what she believes to be right, only to find herself hitting a wall over and over again, to feel so powerless against life sometimes, just like we all do in reality. So empathizing with John and seeing her struggle to find her own way, the right way, in order to move forward and face the horrible fate she brought upon herself, is what compelled, at least to me, to keep playing the game. I'm a sucker for John of Arc stories, so this one has been one of the best ones so far I've ever seen in my life. Number 2. Aegis Aegis is a supporting character in Persona 3, but if you didn't know, she has her own game, a spin-off and also a direct sequel of that game called The Answer. Being the protagonist now, we get to see everything from that universe through her own point of view. And just like we loved her, understood her, and watched her grow human emotions in Persona 3, we see her face yet the hardest struggle in her life during The Answer. She's probably one of the most popular Android characters in the history of gaming, and for a good reason. Often we have seen robots trying to emulate human emotions and understand them to be better person themselves, ironically, but most of them always try to deny what they truly are. Aegis doesn't do either. Instead, she tries to find the answers on her own to understand them from her point of view, as an android not trying to be something she's not. And such is the reason why she's one of the best female protagonists I've seen in a video game, and such is the reason why she's one of my favorite characters of all time. Number 1. Leneth Valkyrie I'm a huge fan of the Valkyrie sisters. I love the three of them equally, and to date, it's hard for me to pick a favorite. Leneth, however, has been the only protagonist of the game, with Silmeria being a close second but obviously overshadowed by Alicia, as we previously saw. I first met Leneth around 12 years ago when I first played Valkyrie Profile 2, a couple of years before playing her own game for the PlayStation 1. Immediately, I fell in love with her in the second game, so my expectations were high on the first game until I finally played it. I have to say, I was not disappointed. I loved her story even more, and her development took my understanding of female protagonists to a whole different level. If Leneth is the first place in this list, it is precisely because her journey through a universe in war left little words towards oppression and how often women used to have almost zero saying on the matter. Leneth plays a soldier that had to voluntarily forget her own past, suppress her emotions, and observe how unfair human life can be 
and how most people have no voice during political conflicts. How she began relating more and more to the warriors she was recruiting, how this opened up her heart, which led to the recovery of her emotions and memories, is what made me embrace her and her story more than any other character in this list. So that's the reason why, in my opinion, she is the best female protagonist I've ever seen in a video game. That's it for this video guys, please don't forget to share your own female protagonists, who are your favorite, even if they're co-stars, maybe I'll make a video about co-stars one day, because there's a lot of girls that I do want to talk about. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!